you've designed, researched, and modeled. And now it's time to show off all that hard work and convince the judges that your city design is the best. The city we bring to you is Glycelica, the city of Elk. You'll have seven minutes to present your city and then defend your design during a five to eight minute Q&A session. This is a team effort. Everyone has to speak during the presentation. You have to be comfortable talking in front of people that you obviously don't really know. You have to be able to talk to the judges and think on the spot because a lot of it's not formulated. Giving your presentation a unique setting like a city council meeting is a good way to provide a framework to showcase your city to the judges. But don't go overboard. Don't let the kid's imagination distract from the delivery of that, that information. You'll identify and describe city features using your city model, props, and visual aids. Visual aids can include display boards, flip charts, costumes, and brochures. Remember your budget for your model and presentation materials together must come in under $100, and no computers and videos are allowed. What kind of visual aids did you use? We remade LA, and so that's to represent the smog that covered LA before, and then after we remade, like redid everything, how we cleared out the smog. The city's name is RAIN, and it's an acronym, and it stands for Renewable Alternative Innovative Neighborhood. And so we're using these umbrellas, because it's RAIN. And then we both, we all have raincoats. These are me and Elizabeth. It just catches the judge's attention, because we don't, we don't want to be the same as everyone else. You know, just walk in and say a presentation and we wanted to catch their attention. Even if I don't end up being an engineer, it still helps me with like my leadership skills and my collaboration skills and my speaking skills. So it's a really useful, fun project. The judges will want to know what types of engineering make your city tick. They award points on delivery, presentation, and how knowledgeable your answers are. We just practice questions with them. And you know, you might be asked this, how are you gonna answer this? And, we make flashcards for how to answer certain questions and sometimes they're exactly the way the judges ask and sometimes they're not so you know how can you you know figure out or ad lib if, if it's not exactly what we wrote down. It's an actual, okay how, how does the water get up there? The judges are very encouraging they want you to succeed they're not going to do anything that will scare you or they're uh, they just they want you to be at ease and so you just gotta go in with that attitude that they really like you and they, they're gonna encourage you. They may ask you questions that are hard, but, but what it is is that they want to see to the point of what you've learned. So just show them what you've learned because that's what they wanna know. Our city's an underwater city and we focus a lot on tourism. Most people don't realize how important communication skills are to being a successful engineer. Communication skills and presenting is a huge part of your life as an engineer. Once you get that first engineer job and all through your career, that's gonna be the whole ticket to your success. You might have the most phenomenal ideas, but if you can't impart them and communicate them to either your client or your peers, it doesn't matter. All successful engineers must be able to present their ideas in writing and in person. Well, if they aren't good communicators, they're a bad engineer. Don't forget that it's all about teamwork. They had a lot of problem solving to do. They had some personality conflicts and they had to be able to work through that just like they will in real life. Judges need to see that you work well together. Any questions that would come up concerning their model, they'd be able to answer and not just one person focusing on one thing, but the team as a whole knowing every aspect. Electrolysis is a process of putting an electrical current through water. We use the rubric kind of as a guide to make sure that we got everything that we needed. Some of the tips that we give the students are pretty simple things with public speaking. Stand up straight, smile, eye contact, engage your audience. But some of the more in detail ones would be, as example, with hand gestures. Keep them in the box, right here. If they're outside the box, you'll lose your audience. You have to be prepared. And how do you do that? Practice, practice, and some more practice. You memorize it probably by yourself, and then it turns into a lot, yeah. We practiced quite a bit. I think the most fun was actually like starting to get into competition, like you're excited and you get to start your presentations. You're ready, you're set. Now go and present.